God is real. He is the one and the only God. He is worthy of worship and veneration. He is fair. He is just. He is all loving. He is all knowing, all seeing, all hearing. He owns everything, including you and I, the sun, the moon, the world, everything it contains. He is in control of all things. He wants people to believe in him, to do good and to avoid evil so they can achieve the reward of paradise. God sent all of mankind on this worldly journey as a test to weed out the worthy from the unworthy, to test which of those amongst his servants would perform best. Mankind would be lost on earth if they were left to their own devices because they wouldn't know what God expects of them. Additionally, when one acts according to their feelings, desires, passions, they become oppressed by sadness, worry, and fear that results from these impulsive actions. Humans can't afford the twists and turns of this life without God's guidance. Humans must ask their Creator for guidance and to show them the straight path. God bestowed guidance unto His servants in form of revelation and through prayer, the form of communication through which Muslims communicate with God at least five times a day. The goal of a follower of Islam is to become a true servant of God by submitting to His will and to worship Him alone. Those who pass this test would enter paradise eternally. Those who fail, meanwhile, would enter hellfire in the afterlife. Let's take a closer, deeper look at this subject. Everything populating the heavens and the earth, including the animals, mountains, the skies, and the earth, are all in state of submission to the sovereignty of Allah. They are all living for, obedient to, in submission to, and are at the disposal of God and His laws. They all exist in state of Islam. God states in the Quran, to Him submits whatever is in the heavens and the earth. Everything in nature functions accordingly to fixed laws set forth by God and cannot deviate from those laws. The sun knows its role. It knows the cycle of its rotation. It knows its role as the giver of light, heat, and energy on earth. The earth knows its rotation cycle around its own axis. Your own eyes, heart, brain, your entire body, and all of its components are working subject to the laws of nature and have no choice but to do as they are intended. All of God's creation worships Him in a manner appropriate to their situation. The sun, the moon, the stars, the mountains, the trees, the animals, the whole universe all exist in a state of subjugation to Allah, all prostrate to Him, with all of them worshipping Him in an appropriate manner. God the Almighty said, Do you not see that to Allah prostrates whoever is in the heavens and whoever is on the earth, and the sun, the moon, the stars, the mountains, the trees, the moving creatures as many of the people? But upon many the punishment has been justified, and he whom Allah humiliates, for him there is no bestower of honor. Indeed, Allah does what He wills. Man is expected to worship and praise his Creator, much like creations around him are continuously praising God in humility in a way that we may not understand. All of creation praises, worships, and lives in submission to the Almighty in their own unique way. God's creation prostrates to Him as per to its nature, even if they do not press their foreheads to the ground. The seven heavens and the earth and whatever is in them exalt Him, and there is not a thing except that exalts Allah by His praise. But you do not understand their way of exalting. He is forever forbearing and forgiving. All of God's creation know their mission and purpose. Just like the physical world submits to its Lord, human beings must submit to the will and laws of God. Unlike other creations of God, man was gifted with the qualities of intelligence, the ability to comprehend and understand, and the wisdom to think, reflect, and ponder over this creation, as well as his life purpose. Man was also gifted with the ultimate beauty of expression, and with the ability to make choices and decisions. God created many astounding creations, and the most noble of those creations are human beings. 
God states in the Quran, we have certainly created man in the best of stature. All humans are born with an innate eagerness and ability to seek God, to recognize and understand the existence of the Creator. Once many discover the truth, they hasten to submit to Allah, entering into a state of total submission. Islam fundamentally answers the questions that trouble the conscience of every human being. Why was I created? What am I doing here? What is my life's purpose for existence? Islam answers all of these massive life questions. Mankind was born in a pure and pristine original state, one that inclines toward that which is ethically, morally, and spiritually pure, upright, and wholesome. They have an inclination towards helping others, removing objects from the road, thanking people, etc. Everyone has an internal moral conscience, calculator, compass, if it is not corrupted, man's intrinsic moral conscience suffers discomfort and upset when someone does wrong. This owning to the fact that this conscience always points in the direction of good, which brings one closer to God. This goodness, which is programmed in humans, compels them to be grateful when something good comes its way. Humans have this eagerness to thank their Creator. God has reinforced man's natural disposition with the signs that he has planted throughout creation to testify to his existence. A main objective of the Qur'an is to invite people to ponder and reflect. Allah refers to the earth, the sun, the moon, the merging of the night into the day and the merging of the day into the night as his miraculous signs. A number of verses of the Qur'an proclaim that God has placed this world at the service of mankind. In these immoral passages, God demonstrates blessings towards mankind. And we have certainly honored the children of Adam, and carried them on the land and sea, and provided for them of the good things and preferred them over much of what we have created, with definite preference. Man faces a choice, the offer to submit before God, like all other creations, or to go astray and violate God's laws. All will be held accountable for their choices. The Qur'an teaches that the signs and proofs of God's existence, wisdom, power, mercy, and the existence are evident in the world around us. Together they point to the existence of a creator, a maker, a fashioner. This creation is flawless and perfect. Life on earth and the universe itself demonstrates so much order purpose, intelligence, and design, all of which prove the existence of a creator that designed and fashioned everything. Thus, God calls on man to ponder, reflect, and think deeply about the design of this complex creation in order to build a better understanding of his creator. When one reflects, one realizes that the world and everything it contains was created with intelligence and infinite wisdom, not by chance. Human beings, regardless of who they are, where they are, and when they live, are always curious to why they exist in this world. For what purpose? Only our Creator can tell us why we are here, and for what purpose. Among the many blessings and favors that God has bestowed upon mankind is an innate ability to recognize and acknowledge God's existence. God placed this awareness deep in man's heart in the form of a natural disposition, one that has not changed since the creation of man. Every human was born clean and pure with a natural awareness of good and evil. Every human being also has a natural instinct to believe in and worship a creator who is one who has no partners. This belief does not come about as a result of learning or personal reflection, but is something placed by God into the heart of every human. With the passing of time, the changing of one's environment, and the advent of outside influences from parents and friends, this innate belief of God affects and confuses a person. Prophet Muhammad narrated, Every child is born in a state of fitrah, a natural belief in God. Then his parents make him a Jew, a Christian, or a Magian. God encourages one to observe and ponder over his beautiful creation. He asks man to reflect upon the mountains, the sun, the moon, the stars, the trees, etc. So that they will realize their blessings. They will witness a clear sign, evidence and proof of his existence. One should stop and look up at the sky. 
and admire the beauty of the ocean, the mountain, the sunset. Had they not looked at the heavens above them, how we structured it and adorned it, and how it has no rifts? One should ask himself when was the last time he admired and pondered over this beautiful creation. Recognizing the signs of God's existence would require a degree of personal effort, and this recognition must occur in accordance with his or her own wisdom and conscience. For the people who understand, everything around them is a sign of this creation. Pondering upon the intricacy and order of this magnificent creation would help one come to the conclusion that this glorious universe indeed had a wise creator who crafted, fashioned, molded everything. One would eventually perceive the fact that the entire universe, including oneself and one's own body, is created by a superior power. One would come to the conclusion that this world was created in proportion and with measure and definite purpose. And we did not create the heavens and the earth that between them for mere play. God also encourages people to look at their own creation, their own body, and how it was constructed so perfectly. We will show them our signs in the horizons and within themselves, until it becomes clear to them that it is the truth. But is it not sufficient concerning your Lord that he is over all things a witness? Additionally, pondering over the creation of mankind and the universe would help one realize that the deity behind this eternal creation can recreate it once again. One would realize that God can easily resurrect all of mankind for Judgment Day. Do they not think that they will be resurrected for a tremendous day? The day when mankind will stand before the Lord of the worlds. God also states, how can you disbelieve in Allah when you were lifeless and he brought you to life? Then he will cause you to die. Then he will bring you back to life and then to him you will be returned. In today's materialistic world, the endless quest for fame and wealth distracts many from reflecting on this beautiful creation of God and the purpose behind it. We live in a world where people are obsessed with materialism and their main objective and focus in life is to gather all of the money and prizes they can. We are in a world where people are obsessed with taking as much as possible from this world. A perpetual state of excessive materialism can affect one's inner peace. One cannot achieve satisfaction in life if he or she is chasing material gains to an excessive extent. Rather, one should look at the situation of those who are less fortunate. In this way, one will have a greater appreciation of love, gifts, benefits, and mercy that the Almighty has bestowed upon them in regard to their own family, wealth, friends, housing, etc. Mankind was created and born with a sense of awe, of wonder. But many have killed that sense of wonder somewhere along his or her journey to adulthood. Many no longer feel the awe of God's creation around them due to the excessiveness, obsession, and distraction of materials of this world. Many are so occupied by this useless material goods and useless talk and gossip that they have forgotten and are immune to the miracles happening around them every second of every day. One should think deeply and ask bigger questions about life and his or her purpose, rather than thinking of the next movie or the next game or what to have for dinner. For the few that do ponder and think deeply on this creation, which others overlook, they discover within it signs and great lessons all around them that lead them straight back to their creator. Signs that lead one to an appreciation of the wisdom and wonders of Almighty's creation, bringing them thus closer to their God. In the Quran, God invites individuals of understanding to think about the issues which other people overlook. Praise be to God, He will show you His signs and you will recognize them. Your Lord is not heedless of anything you do. The Quran calls people to reject the blind following of false beliefs, imposed through one's environment and society, and instead to ponder and reflect on things around them without the prejudice, taboos, and constraints. In numerous verses of the Quran, God points to different aspects of His creation, referencing them as signs and proofs of His existence for those people who reflect, ponder, and think. God states, Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the alternation of the night and the day, and the great ships which sail through the sea with that which benefit people, and what Allah has sent down from the heavens of rain, giving life thereby to the earth after its lifelessness and disappearing therein every kind of moving creation 
in his direction of the winds and the clouds controlled between the heavens and the earth are signs for people who use reason. A person's purpose in life is to find God, build a relationship with Him, and engage in a continuous effort to submit to His will. The best joy and the most peace that one can achieve in this world is derived from the servitude to God and to be an obedient slave of God. God states, God states unequivocally that humankind was created in order to worship Him. God states, And I did not create the jinn and mankind except to worship me. One can easily misunderstand this to mean that God wants humans to exist in constant prayer, to dwell on the remembrance of God at all times, and to spend their entire lives in constant seclusion and absolute meditation. This is not the case. In Islam, worshipping God includes and entails every act, belief, statement, or sentiment of the heart which God approves and loves. The act of worship in Islam is very broad in scope. The worship of God can include acts such as removing objects from the road, helping one in need, being good to one's own parents and family, making money in a rightful manner, sharing food with neighbors, visiting an ill person, etc. The act must be done sincerely to please God, and not with the boastful or impure motives. The act should also be consistent with Almighty's guidance and laws. Any thought or act that brings a person closer to his Creator would be considered an act of worship. God created man for a noble purpose, to worship Him and live a virtuous life based on God's teachings and guidance. Salvation in Islam is connected with the acts of doing good and refraining from sins. One who excels in goodness will be rewarded generously in the hereafter, but one that lives an evil life will be punished. To worship God is to get to know Him, learn His names and attributes, to love Him, to obey His commandments, and to enforce His laws in every aspect of life. To worship God is to serve His cause, engaging in the struggle and the quest of doing right, shunning evil, and to be just. According to the Qur'an, following and obeying God's commandments and refraining from prohibited activities would make one's life easier and lighten one's burden. And Allah wants to lighten for you your burden difficulties, and mankind was created weak. Some mistakenly believe that disobeying the commands of God while partying their whole life away would make for a more enjoyable, peaceful life. They also believe that if they find God and follow His commands, then they are going to deprive themselves of things they would have otherwise enjoyed. And this couldn't be further from the truth. Quite the opposite is true, actually. While the commands of other religions are often viewed as burdensome and rigid, the rules of Islam are not seen this way by the devout Muslim. A devout Muslim would see these rules as what's best for him or her, in order that they be guided to success happiness, honor, and contentment in this life and the next. God states if you abide by His advice, He would relieve the burdens of your life, rendering your existence much easier and more relaxed. You would find contentment in the heart. You would find more peace and harmony, not only within yourself, but with the things and people around you. God has given mankind a set of laws to follow, so that one would have an easier and more enjoyable life. Each of God's commandments is given in one's own best interest. Anything that God makes impermissible is bad for the individual or for society. For example, alcohol is prohibited in Islam because of its danger and evilness. A lot of studies and evidence demonstrate the effects and dangers of alcohol. Mankind was not brought to this earth as a punishment, despite what other religions may think. God advises mankind to simply stay away from those things He has restricted and to abide by his few regulations. Those who follow these simple edicts will enjoy a wonderful, contented life in a blessed world. God promises in the Holy Quran, whoever does righteousness, whether male or female, while he is a believer, we will surely cause him to live a good life, and we will surely give them reward in the hereafter, according to the best of what they used to do. God created certain desires within the human being. One has the ability to control those desires according to God's laws or to turn them loose and go his separate way. Allah created mankind knowing they would sin. This is why God taught humans, starting with Prophet Adam, how to repent and there purify oneself of their sins. 
Life in this world is also a test for humankind. Everyone faces a separate and unique test. Some get tested through a life of poverty. Some are tempted by wealth. Some enjoy good health. Some suffer bad health, etc. God states in his holy book, He who created death and life to test you as to which of you is best in deeds. And he is the exalted in might, the forgiving. At times, the Almighty tests his creation with calamities and sometimes with blessings to show who will be thankful and who will be ungrateful and to show who will obey and who will disobey. And we will surely test you with something of fear and hunger in the loss of wealth and lives and fruits, but give good tidings to the patient. Every single individual is being tested by God. God tests all of mankind in different ways. One should not mistake his or her life's problems for punishments or as signs that God is displeased with him or her. Likewise, one should never interpret his or her wealth and pleasures as signs that Allah is pleased with them or that they are privileged. Sometimes quite the opposite is true. Allah states in the Quran, Know that your wealth and your children are but a trial and that Allah has with him a mighty reward. God in his wisdom and mercy has decreed that people be tried and tested in various ways to develop their psyches, strengths and improve their character and evolve them into beings which are pleasing to him. Sometimes when one undergoes certain instances of suffering, he or she immediately thinks and prays to God even if he or she is not religious. At times the very experience of suffering leads one to God. A Muslim views this world as a temporary stop en route to a final destination, the afterlife, where man would live eternally. This is not to say that this temporary world is not important or shouldn't be taken seriously, but this life should not be lived sinfully and at the expense of the hereafter, which is a lot longer and better in scope. If one's goal in life was to become wealthy, then there would be no purpose in existence after one achieves the goal of wealth. How could wealth then be considered the aim of life? This world is not about acquiring material goods or physical pleasures. A Muslim views and interacts with this world for what it really is, just a means to an end. Detachment from this world doesn't mean that you abandon all material possession and own nothing substantial. Rather, a healthy detachment of this world means that nothing should own you. This life is about attaining purpose. This purpose is found when one lives to better himself, including his family, his friends, and community. One should be in the process of preparing for the eternal joy of the afterlife. The purpose of life in Islam is to become the true sincere servant of God. And this worldly life is not but diversion and amusement, and indeed the home of the hereafter, that is their eternal life, if only they knew. This life is temporary and will someday come to an end for the individual, and an end for humanity altogether. But the hereafter is eternal. The experience of life in this world is almost nothing compared to life in the hereafter. Prophet Muhammad stated, What is the example of this worldly life in comparison to the hereafter? Other than one of you dipping his finger in the sea, let him see what he brings forth. Whereas the essential purpose for which humankind was created is embodied in the worship of God, the Almighty is not in need of human worship. He certainly did not create human beings out of a need to seek his glory. In fact, if not a single person worshiped God, it will not diminish his glory in any way. God exists without any needs. On the other hand, mankind was created with needs and wants. Thus, it is mankind that is in need of worshiping God. Human beings need to worship and glorify God by obeying divinely revealed laws because obedience to God is the key to success in this life and the hereafter. Mankind is encouraged to remember God as often as possible for their own benefit. Remembrance of God is imperative, as sin is generally committed when God is forgotten. The forces of evil operate most freely when cognizance of God is weak or lost. Satan has overcome them and made them forget the remembrance of Allah. Those are the party of Satan. Unquestionably the party of Satan, they will be the losers. Indeed, it's Satan and his children that seek to occupy one's mind with irrelevant thoughts, material distractions and desires that make them forget their Lord. O oh, believers, remember God often. 
the Almighty instructs man to show gratitude to Him by glorifying Him. Glorify the praises of your Lord and be of those who prostrate to Him. In glorifying God, man chooses to be in harmony with the rest of the creation, an act which naturally glorifies the Creator all throughout the day and night, in its own and unique manner. Since it is not possible for mankind to have a detailed knowledge of God, and to know what God expects of them without divine revelation, God sent messengers throughout the ages to every nation to guide and educate people about their Creator, advising them how to worship Him and how one should live his or her life. The messengers came bearing a holy book from the Almighty. All messengers and books preach the same general message that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah, who has no flaw and is all worthy of worship and gratitude. Our Prophet narrated, whoever guides another to a good deed will get a reward similar to the one who performs it. So please like, subscribe, and share this video. Assalamu alaikum.